We are at the alligator farm in St. Augustine where there are always new little babies being born. There's and one right now back there. Yeah, there's so much going on back here. So, uh, Mark, you know what? I'll work the mic because you've got a crocodile in your hands and it'll let you do the honors of interviewing Trevor here. So, Trevor, so what exactly do we have in our hands right now? Yeah, so these are what we call Yacare caiman. So they're a species found in South America, where caiman actually means uh, crocodile in Spanish. And they are two of our 17 Yacare caiman that we actually hatched out this year. So wow. how old are they? So they're only a few weeks old. So we had them in our incubators. Um, and once uh, they hatched out from their eggs, we were able to move them back here to our nursery. And then I, you know, when you look into like some of these grapes I'm here, they obviously are getting bigger. So how long do you keep them in this stage before you move them on? Yeah, so we'll keep them back, uh, back here for about a year. Uh, we'll use this area to monitor their growth. Sometimes we'll even put them out with their parents. Uh, and then once they got a little bit too big for these uh, habitats, we'll then move them out onto exhibit. Folks, when they visit the alligator farm, they can come back here if they take part in a behind-the-scenes tour. Will they actually have their hands on them like we do? Or? Yeah, so they can definitely come back here for behind-the-scenes tour. They won't necessarily be holding them like we are, but they can definitely come out and touch them. I'll even let you use a two-finger touch right there along the back and get to meet our hatchlings here. Really, really cute, but they also look like they could take somebody's finger off if you didn't know how to properly hold them. Exactly. We want to make sure that everyone's being safe. So gave them a brief rundown on how to hold a little hatchling right before this. Um, but we want to make sure that our animals' safety is top priority. So we always make sure that when people are back here, our animals are in a stress-free condition or uh, habitat. And I think the other big part, too, is that people learn so much, and that's a big part of what you guys are all about. That's the big message. Yeah, definitely. Learning about conservation and crocodilians is kind of what we promote. And these aren't the only little babies born. I know we're going to meet another uh, new family, right? Yes, yeah, so we're about to go back to our incubators for the first time ever. We were able to hatch out Nile crocodiles, so we're going to go see those individuals here, here soon. Right now, we are in the incubation room. Trevor, so walk us through really everything that happens here. Yeah, so when our crocodilians finally lay their eggs in their nests, we'll actually go and raid those nests. Um, and we do that so we can make sure that the eggs are incubated at a proper temperature and humidity. Re the reason that's important is because these animals are from different parts of the world, and of course, they have different types of climates. So we want to make sure that we're representing the climate that the animal's from. So in here, we actually have two of our newest additions. They're Nile crocodile hatchlings. Uh, Before we see them, yeah, of course. Grow Nile crocodiles, they, really yeah, they can get upwards of maybe like 17, 18 feet long. They're okay. one of the longest species of crocodile and definitely the longest in Africa. And so these individuals just hatched out. Uh, and so we're gonna get a pretty unique look at them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And so if you ever wondered what a juvenile or a hatchling crocodile looked straight out of the egg, there you go. So that red stuff there, don't worry, that is just part of their yolk sac that is completely normal. Yeah. They just hatched out this morning, so fairly new. <laughs> Now, what about the temperature? Does that change as far as like what their sexes are? Because I've heard that before. It definitely does. So for crocodilians, it's a little strange. It, there's a gradient temperature. So I can't give you what the gradient is for Nile crocodiles right off the top of my head. Um, but for reptiles and journals, the saying is hot chicks, cool dudes. So the warmer the temperature, the more likely it's a female. The cooler the temperature, the more likely it is a male. You mean to tell me when they're in the egg, we don't know what, they don't even know what they're going to be yet. They're not done. They're not what done the heck? <laughs> it's all depending on what that temperature is on when they are incubating. And there it goes again, the environment playing such a huge role in all this. Exactly. So again, that's why we also bring those eggs here into our incubation chamber to make sure that we are sometimes bringing out either males or females, depending on what the population in the species calls for. Right now, when you look around, you see a lot of different bins. So how many hatchlings do you have? So we're at the tail end. We saw a little bit earlier the yacare came in. Those were some of our big clutches. We actually have a board right behind us that kind of shows how many have hatched out. Um, <clears throat> so right now, we just have our Nile crocodiles left, and then some of our uh, dwarf came in as well. Well, Trevor, thanks again for this behind-the-scenes tour. We really appreciate it. We learned so much. If people want to learn more, where can they go? Yeah, they can go to our website, alligatorfarm.com. That's um, where we have a lot of our conservation efforts that we're participating in and a lot of our education as well.